the living room where the family meets to discuss issues any issue which may be bothering one of the family members that's what we do each and every tuesday on WAC 90.1 fm with ricardo mitchell and dj aaron 868 we have casual conversations on serious topics from sports to culture, mental health to economics, relationships to life lessons. Join us each and every Tuesday on WAC 90.1 FM. The Living Room. Casual conversations on serious topics. It is now 6 p.m. here in Trinidad and Tobago. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I'm glad to know you're locked on to the true nation station, WACK 90.1 FM, where we are. Culture c -c -c crazy. First and foremost, let's kick this off as you always do, all right? We must give thanks and praises to the Almighty for granting us the gift of life and seeing another day. No matter what time of day it is, you must always give thanks. Secondly, we must say thank you to those that went before us and we are not just talking about our ancestors, the original inhabitants of Trinidad and Tobago, because we all know, accept and reiterate and we the sing it would be Chester Columbus slide, but also to our brother in music, Tony P, where the P this week stands for? Pestilence, boy. I had to say pestilence. Uh, the news over the past couple of days has been up and down, yeah? But we have a scourge, a, a lawlessness, and mindlessness, and a lack of respect for life by these, um, these young fellas. These young fellas doing the most, and the people who facilitating it doing the most. Uh, you understand? The, the kind of headlines are, uh, I want to start too heavy for the listeners to start to come off and say, oh gosh, you're going on this road again. But some, something I work in, man. Something I work in. The, the, too, much, too many multiple, too many multiple homicides and that kind of thing. I, I think on, on, on Monday night, we had a four or a three, then Tuesday morning, we, well, this morning we had like a two or a three. Yeah, I don't know. Like something and something is not working. And you I know um one of your favorite people on the face of the earth, um, Mr. Ansel Rouget, would have been interviewed last week where he spoke about the the look of crime. Mm -hmm. That crime was only perpetrated by a a, a portion of our population a specific portion of our population mm -hmm. and i think there's a conversation that we'll save for another day probably yeah. in men in men's health month we will have a conversation about that because let's face it a lot of the crimes have been from what we know in the statistics are perpetrated by men mm -hmm. so i think as two men who sit in a, a, a position that we do where we try to constantly create positive content in our bacchanal environment I think we are due a conversation on things that we as men should be doing to ensure that we don't head down that road or things that we could say to other men to prevent them from heading down that road or avenues that we could direct men to so that they would not head down that road. So what you're saying is a, a program about the profile of the, pers the, of the pestilence. Hey. Hmm. Wow, diarrhea alliteration there, but yes. I remember I have a bit of a gift, you know. But speaking of gifts, uh, the Lord has blessed the listeners of WAC 90.1 FM with our presence. See what I did there, gifts, presence. And we didn't introduce ourselves. Oh, yes. You could go first this week. I'm going to see oh. how it goes. Yeah, well, this is yours truly, Ricardo Mitchell, the social stage on the global stage. Thank you for joining us in the living room. Guys, there are a couple dozen of you all who stay on the YouTube feed when the program comes in. And there's a lot of y'all who come off and then log back in when Mr. Desmond comes in with the music. And I feel that, and I ain't gonna talk about the people who just take the opportunity to go and do something else. I just want to say thank you to the people who stay tuned and locked in to the living room. Because we do have important conversations, even if they might be a little um, unpalatable at the time. We, we having these conversations because we care. So I want to thank you for caring enough to stay logged on. And speaking of unpalatable things, um, a Kaiso was released on Monday, which was yesterday, where a gentleman who is very well known to most of us, he spoke of the fact that sometimes to get the message across, you need to deliver it in a rough manner. And sometimes you 
No, sometimes you don't need the sweetest voice to do that. Oh well, time is say, <clears throat> time is say you don't need the sweetest voice. <laughs> I, I know where you're going with already. <laughs> the man said it at the start of his sky. So, so I am not lying. In no way, form, or fashion, he said he does not have the sweetest voice, and he knows it. But sometimes the message is rough, and the voice have to mess the match the message. That's what we're talking. Well, I know exactly so, what you're talking about. So at some point tonight, we will feature the Kaiso from that gentleman. He goes by the name of Kenny Phillips. And the song of choice is called Mr. Phillips. Yeah, yeah the spelling real weird. I cannot you know, wait. You know, he's a weird fella. But the name of the tune is Sweet Voices, right? So it was written by Kurt Allen. Yeah, mm-hmm. Kurt Allen. Mm-hmm. Kenny Phillips. And... I don't know if this fella is of any relation to him. Kyle Phillips. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, right. right. I, I may have heard him. I may have heard of yeah. him. If, if you don't know Kyle Phillips, we did an interview with him sometime last year. And it was called the Pod Match. He could head back over to my SoundCloud. Yeah, my SoundCloud, my YouTube. Search for The Living Room 868 or DJ Aaron 868 and The Living Room playlist is there. The name of the episode was Pod Match. P-O-D-M-A-R-C-H. Right? So that's who Kyle Phillips is. True, true, true. And that was a play on the road march. Um, about the, the festivities at the time being held in these little in the pods. Yeah, these little uh, cubicle type stands. Yeah. And could only imagine how much money was spent on those pods, just like the amount of money that was spent on the Debe campus of Uni- the University of the West Indies that sits there like a white elephant covered in vines right now. Anytime you're passing out Debe, just look on the left and you will see it. Another waste of money in our country. What are you talking about? Casper and he goes from Pac-Man had to have somewhere to go to school. Right? Because clearly... That, 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 and that, that today's Halloween. Today's Halloween. So the that Adams family going to school down there. Mm-hmm. Disney, yeah. Disney Haunted Mansion, I want nothing. Nah. We have yeah. Debe Yui Campus. Amongst others, eh? <laughs> The amount, amount of white of elephants we have. Just like the one if you're going up the highway just after Republic Bank after Shogunas, that next nice little four-story thing, wherever it's supposed to be, that was another thing that just sits in there and I don't know where it's supposed to be. Anyhow, if you don't know the voice that was just ranting about white elephants in Trinidad, in the red of Trinidad and Tobago, I am your Shruti DJ here on 868. I remind you each and every time that culture is my code. Correct. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Aaron, who you vote for? I notice your fingers, your fingertips stained. <laughs> um, for those of you that last week you spoke about that I was across in Tobago this weekend for the festivities. That was Tobago Carnival. Um, you want to talk about that or we have other pressing matters to talk about? No, 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 no. no. Um, I, I want your feedback on the experience because a lot of the people who went across had one thing to see, which was... You cannot look at Tobago Carnival through Trinidad Carnival goggles. Right? The news, the reports were back and forth as well. So I want to hear from my Red Mango eating partner on the ground. What was Tobago Carnival 2023 like? All right. So first and foremost, I must say kudos to the Caribbean Airlines family. You don't hear that I, often. You don't hear that often. And I want to congratulate Caribbean Airlines from um, from my experiences on a well planned out transit to and from Tobago this weekend. I my cat flight was carded for I think 4:40 on Friday afternoon. I got to the airport they recommended 2 hours before and I was on a flight at 2:30. Nice. Right? Mm-hmm. On to come home on Sunday, well I was supposed to come home this morning actually. Um, but I had to get home on Sunday because I had another engagement mm-hmm. and I was able, the, the persons that booked the ticket for me to come home were able to get a ticket, no hiccups. On my own fruition, I got to the airport late. I stayed, I, I, I stayed too long at the beach. I must apologize. All right. And I was able to get on my flight with minimal hiccups. But with everybody trying to make sure and be early for their flight, the lines to get in domestic check-in were long. But what they did was they asked who had the first flight, which was that um, the flight for three o'clock, who was on that flight, please come to the front of the line and get on and we are good to go. All right. Right? So big up Caribbean Airlines. Big up Cal. Right. Um, big up Pantry and Bago. Mm-hmm. 
if I I would be lying if I did not say that I enjoyed their pan and powder event on Friday on the stretch in Scarborough. Similar to what they did in Port of Spain, they had a couple bands set up at the beginning. Then they took the route along the waterfront in Scarborough by the Isle of Tobago sign. And then they ended on the other end with a couple other bands. All right. So big up to Pantry and Bago for that. Um, now to the juicy part. <laughs> oh. Juve. Mm -hmm. Caro, when you last you went to Juve? Wow, well, it has to be maybe about seven, about about six years ago. Right. So here I'm a question. Juve usually starts before the sun comes up, right? Normally. Right. Yes. The whole premise of Juve meaning the opening <laughs> is supposed to be a, a, right. a start of the day thing. So they said the band that I played with who shall remain unnamed. Mm -hmm. Um they said that they were pulling off at 4 a.m. I left home at 3.45. Right. Saying that by the time I reach the band, probably now pulling off. So I'll just join the band one time. Mm -hmm. We pulled off like quarter past five. Okay. Right? The proportion of DJ trucks and drinks trunks to mark masquerade was totally skewed. Favorably? No, negatively. Oh dear. Right? So... You get in trouble to get a drink. Mm -hmm. Apparently, ice in Tobago does smell faster than anything because apparently Tobago is closer to the sun than Trinidad. Yeah, that's on our border. Yeah. So the ice was melting quick, so the drink truck was closing very often. So we went the whole stretch. I don't know the 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 it was the Claude Noel Highway. So we went from the stretch by the gas station to right. the next stretch by the penny savers right. with little to no drink. So if you was getting drinks, the beers was hot because the ice wasn't cool and nothing because the ice was melting quick right right yeah, that's that um yeah that's a uh, low 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 cold ice yeah friendly, friendly. Yeah. yeah it's called that <laughs> <laughs> right so you don't spend your money so you're trying to make the most of the experience but yeah, police pass you, you would do yeah mm -hmm. but police passing every three minutes and the djs had to load on the music for the police to pass right so if you had to put it on a graph right the vibes going like this okay hey choppy yeah hey, thank you mm -hmm. like the waters of the coast of tobago this week because of El Nino. um that was one the djs the djs were good but because the vibes was choppy All right well sorry the, the playing of music was choppy you were not able to enjoy the music However, Mike men be here to hear the music, not to hear you talk about your life stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why you notice we dedicate our entire hour to just the conversation. Yeah, because we not on our talk to the music. We no, we he here to talk, not play music. Yeah, there, right? are, there, there was some coming in with Aaron when he doing his shifts, you know. So look at here no, the but, music. But even on a Friday, I try my best to let the music play. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, yeah, I digress. But, so wait, 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 wait. so the, the heat jumpy the thing then a bit of the logistics jumpy the thing yeah and then well i want to say police jumpy the thing but if they're passing every three minutes and you had a load on the music every three minutes is like you're listening to um it's like you're listening to music on the on the computer where every time a song finish it fade out and then before a song started had a fade in again but we got apple music you don't have a problem again um yeah, nice yeah you could, could cross fade music on apple music on. um yeah um there was one other thing i had to highlight as you brought up the police they said that there was an incident free tobago carnival mm -hmm. which is very commendable and applaudable because you could have seen the high level of police the presence was there it was felt mm -hmm. and that is fantastic however i think they need to relook this option of police driving through the crowds constantly and have put permanent police post set up mm -hmm. have the vehicles there that if they need be they could drive through but have a post set up so that they're constantly passing police posts as opposed to the police posing through traffic mm -hmm. so the the mobile patrol actually um while while presence is necessary the patrolling mm -hmm. was also a factor because if you yeah. have post i mean you know you could either run up to the next one or run back to the last one exactly but if, but if it's mobile if it's mobile patrols right through 
if something happened when they just pass that you, you, to, you want till the next you one to, you had to run down the scene the, the truck right. the van that just passed or wait to see our next one pass okay, okay i must also commend the the health services they had a lot of stations set up where if you were feeling fatigued you could go and get a rest mm-hmm. or if there was an incident you could have gone to get assistance right i must also commend them on having the what we call porta potties yeah yeah stay set up along the route as well so there were some positives there were some negatives right but i again i must say to be go sun hot hmm. mm-hmm. right the juve started at 5 15 it probably i left at let's say 9 or 8 40. Hmm. yeah the sun just get too hot and the bears just wasn't cold right yeah, yeah. So I know you're looking at it through the lens of both um, an ambassador for culture mm-hmm. as well as an event manager slash coordinator. Yeah. Right? In terms of your eyes as a patron, just as a patron, do would I get your money again? No. This the Juve or the whole carnival? The honestly I'm giving it a rest next year. Okay right and i'm saying that be- and i tried my best to look at it purely as a patron but it's very difficult when you're seeing things that are supposed to be a standard not mm-hmm. being put in place because you're supposed to not look at it with trinidad eyes mm-hmm. right so my brethren big up keeks he went to collect my costume on friday night and he said the experience at the mass camp was terrible because they didn't have enough persons there to handle the distribution handle the distribution right for me if you know you are having a band and you're expecting a turnout of 2000 plus people you need to have the necessary staff on hand yes you may have to shift staff to other areas which may need attention like the bar and these different things but you should always focus on making sure that the customers have a good experience at the first point of contact, yeah. which is either registration or collection. Or collection, yeah. Right? That's one. When you have a bar on the road, you always need to have... So if it, if there are three or four corners along the route, right? Mm-hmm. Always have the ability to restock something at those three or four corners. Ice is the most perishable resource at any event. If you cannot afford, and I understand financial constraints are a serious thing when it comes to events. If you cannot afford to have an ice bin, a, 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 a freezer on the drink truck that keeping the ice freezed and cold, always have the ability to restock along your route. Hmm. Also, if you know the truck could only hold a certain amount of stock, always have the ability to restock along the route too. It have no shame in stopping the truck on a corner and letting them pour on some more chaser, some more water, and some more booze or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Right? That's one, two, three. If you are having a wee wee truck, Mm -hmm. please have a ladder for the patrons to get on the truck. Oh gosh, man. Four. If you're going to be syncing your music trucks so that all the trucks on the band playing the same thing, mm-hmm. test out that technology before. Know what is the maximum reach of the transmitters so that you will always try to keep your trucks within that distance. This sounds like a lot of it is growing pains. As in the type of thing where if Yes, we understand a lot of people taking the opportunity to invest in the event and in the, the culture and in the expression of the arts. But if this is your first time or your first t- taking a swing at something of that size or that scale, well, then your best bet would be to bring on a professional who have the experience so they could tell you these things before and not after. Um, on Monday, I saw the NCC say that they are offering their assistance to Tobago again. As much I, as I understand the NCC, which is the National Carnival Commission, is the governing body of carnivals here in Trinidad and Tobago, mm-hmm. I still think that the NCC has some learning to do. Mm. Because look at how carnival in Port of Spain is every year. 
and if yeah. the NCC is the governing body for Carnival, why is it that they have not digressed their attention away from Port of Spain and realized that within the different regions there are carnivals as well? Hmm. Because if you do that, right, I'm just saying, if you put forward quality products in three different boroughs or cities, let's just call one San Fernando, mm-hmm. just saying, because, you know, we, we, we are the only radio station in San Fernando, so we have to speak of San Fernando. Right. So let's just say you put attention to San Fernando because admittedly, San Fernando is the home of culture. It is the home of traditional aspects of our culture. And not just San Fernando, we're talking about from Gasparillo, come down. The Southwest Peninsula. Southwest and Southeast. Right, because you will say so then. Because I know it have, um, we have some point listeners and thing there who yeah. probably don't start to type and pick up. Yeah. <laughs> but big up, big up Birdman and Miserable Wendell. I saw the boat at, well, not Birdman, sorry. I saw Wendell in Tobago this weekend, right? He was the security in the band. Yeah. Man, the man looking fit. He's hustling, and I admire that. Yeah, that vibes. Right. Speaking anyway, of, speaking, of, speaking of hustling, though, uh, you say you're sitting out next year, but would you go back as a consultant? As in, would you go back if someone says, "Hey, Williams, we hear it as you say, and we think somebody with your expertise could come and help us do this thing a little better"? Would you go back and help? You have won that opportunity, yes, but as a patron. No. Oh, okay. Right. And that that is um that's a big statement, huh? Yeah. That's a big statement. Um, and I don't think it's about crying down the thing, you know. It's about recognizing that for it to grow, these are the things that had to straighten up. Yep. Um, so if NCC di- di- divest its attention away from Port of Spain and realize here what's going on, if we put forward quality products in different regions, maybe not everybody will rush to Port of Spain. No, I'm not saying that Port of Spain masses is less or better than anybody's owner. I'm just saying that if you realize here going on, there's a quality product in San Fernando. I could stay in Sando and play mass with, with Jagasa or Fireworks or Kalicharan. Great. Whereas everybody is trying to fit in the same 10 bands in town under the two monopolies. Sorry, the one monopoly and the other big bands. You're clogging up Port of Spain. If, them, if, if one, one brand has eight bands mm-hmm. and each of the eight bands is 5,000 people each, that 40,000 people that wasn't in Port of Spain before coming in Port of Spain Carnival on Monday and Tuesday, where again the parking, where let them fit in on the road in, con- in conjunction with all the trucks. So I think NCC needs to look at properly, properly marketing the carnivals that are not in Port of Spain to give persons viable alternatives. So what you're saying is that it's not just the communities that have to lean into the work. They do need the top-down support. Exactly. Right. Right. But with that being said, just a reminder, NCC and Pantrin Bago will be launching Carnival 2024 this weekend. NCC is at the Queen's Park Savannah on Saturday from the pre-show start at 3 p.m., and Pantrin Bego is from 5 p.m. at Exeter Spaniard in, I think that's St. Augustine or Tuna Puna or that area just in between the two that I don't know the name of. Fair enough. Right? Um, and yeah, just yeah. saying, WAC will be at both of these events. Huh. Yeah. Good times, man. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. You're talking kind of all on costumes and all them kind of thing. You have another um, uh, a little costume situation going on in Trinidad where Halloween is now more than a thing halloween has its own space in trinidad and tobago's marketing and why sales and them kind why of why and, you know what people like people like hot dogs and apples i don't know right it's an american thing but i am wondering why if so many trainees leaning into this halloween thing which is a whole lot of conversation in itself how come you not seeing more representation in terms of our folklore and you know that it was the difference between let me say halloween costumes and an old mass you know was the difference between halloween and you know jumbi you know doppy and duen and you know why why are you seeing this sexy, brand sexiness and 
and them kind of things. It was, yeah, why are you seeing that brand of it and you're not seeing? Welcome come I and say a lot of bless? Costume. Whole weekend. Except for at the launch of the bomb, Bessasar's posthumous book over the weekend. What I'm saying is, where our identity in the adoption of this jumpy thing? I'm going on heavy down the thing now. It's about time I really get heavy. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have been taught, or it has been passed down from generation to generation, for us to be accepting of everybody else's culture while pushing our own in the back. I understand that the majority of content that we consume is American-based content because we have cable or movies that we constantly view and the majority of it is American-based or world-based. Let's just let's not just talk about America. It's you it's global, right? Where is our local content throughout the year? Where is the constant reinforcement of our culture throughout the year? And that's a serious question asking her and I'm posing that to the listeners who are, who are tuned in today and who are going to watch this video after. Where is the constant reinforcement of our culture throughout the year? And don't just blame the government. Don't just blame NCC. Don't blame Pantry and Bego. Don't blame Tuco. Don't blame Ministry of Tourism. Don't blame WAC. Outside of those fairs, because notice Pantry and Bego has now made PAN a year-round activity. Mm. NCC has beefed up their social media marketing and now has different things. I see they have Mass Crush Mondays now. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too cool for Calypso History Month. And outside of Carnival, they have been doing shows. Mm -hmm. WAC is the only place that we could play Kaiso and Soka and Parang and Pan throughout the year. And for those of the young persons who are asking me, they ask the question to me, why WAC do play dancehall? How much urban stations we have here in this country? Right. Dancehall has a space on its own and it does not need WAC to push it. If you don't believe me, tune into any other urban station, sorry, any urban station, and tell me how much of the day it is here, local dancehall being played. Yeah, it has found... It has it found its space. Yeah, yeah. Right? And kudos to our dancehall artists. They realize that dancehall is played the most of the year. Hey, hey, let me sing dancehall. Mm -hmm. Well done, fellas. I may not agree with some of the things that you sing. Right. But you've noticed that there was an avenue for you to go through to get your music played. And you went down that avenue. Where there is necessity is the model of um, invention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. necessity is the model of invention. Yeah. Right. I am... <laughs> Interesting. So, what you're saying is the reason that I'm not seeing gorillas and jab jabs in these halloween things the reason i'm not seeing um zombies and and blue devils the reason i'm not seeing dwen and larger bless and them kind of thing is because so uh, witches and goblins and vampires are what we consume in yeah remember ricardo and for all of those of, for those of you that have already listened to us here in the living room, your diet is not just what you eat. Your diet is what you consume holistically. The music you listen to. The shows on TV you just watch. The things you just read. And admittedly, we have become a less, a less reading population. Mm -hmm. When last year, our papers and read our papers. Yeah, no, last time I buy papers was to do the um Sunday Express Crosswood. Yeah. Yeah, you look like that kind of fella. Hey, that's a jam, you know. <laughs> right. No, what's the con Crosswood. The conversation. For looking for a spokesperson. <laughs> for the Crosswood. Well, anyway. Right. The conversations that we have, all these things constitute your diet. 
and most of the times you replicate what we take in mm. so if we constantly replicate sorry if we constantly consume a culture that is not our own how are we going to replicate our culture right how you know what for the parents that are listening to this this show right now ask your children or your grandchildren what is a larger bless mm-hmm. what is a sukuya and you could come in the when i come friday you could call me and tell me the answers but what, what our folklore what is that yeah are I they teaching that in our primary schools or secondary schools or are we still reading to kill a mockingbird shane um romeo and juliet yeah, hamlet what's the big man caribbean literature is properly represented in um in 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 in, 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 in academics eh? do 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 you think that no i just asked him a question i will answer you answer okay they and thank you for the books the books, the books are there right yeah, they might come to any time yourself on zandy night polls and and countless others who coming up um a lot right. of the week. in fact we bring some so, local authors in next season so well, yeah so okay i stand corrected we are focusing on local literature i can tell you for a fact literally yeah, hundreds of caribbean and trinidadian books acts works of fiction and fact have been produced over the last couple of years it it no. is crazy we will get into that this season man or yes right. but but one thing I, I i must add openly admit two of the best books i read and that constantly stick with me for my secondary school failed literature career i get three for my parents as i feel um a year in San Fernando mm-hmm. by Michael Anthony mm-hmm. and Animal Farm. Yeah. Two of my all time favorite books. And how long ago was that? Oh, gosh, we're trying to do that. Right. right. No, I'm just trying to <laughs> emphasize the importance of literature and, and even, let me not even say literature alone. Creativity impacts. Creativity impacts right a lot of us grow up to reflect some of the things we were imagining or exposed to via someone else's imagination yeah right creativity impacts a couple weeks ago from a podcast uh the the chit chat with two t's podcast we interviewed uh jared primer who's a filmmaker uh out of tobago right yeah big up tobago again yeah big up tobago Uh, that was a nice that was a nice trip and one of the things i came up yeah i i think he's still eating red mango it has so many a beard and he was speaking about the the fledgling film industry in trinidad and tobago and the thing is there are, there are works that are being produced um short stories and even some feature length films but, and we have a trinidad and tobago film festival right there's one of the show one of the productions he put on a couple of years ago was about um a haunted a haunted auditorium a school horror movie serious yeah there were opportunities for even um and uh, apparently trinidad has a a a blossoming horror (laughs) film industry right there are things that are being done that you know i guess maybe the algorithms not algorithm in properly for us but they're there and there are opportunities to start to integrate our folklore and our culture now again i'm not really big on this whole jumbie celebration thing eh? i move past but i get it right even in terms of being able to recognize that if we're going to adopt that particular practice we could still adopt it and we don't have to abandon our our law our stories right people know about shapeshifters but if you ask about alaga who is they're not sure or oh, oh, suku yeah right you, you know what um people like to bash social media right but some of my fondest memories of l- reading local folklore mm-hmm. have been on Twitter. You know? mm-hmm. There was a guy sometime last year around the same time he did a thread. Talk about your your Sukuya stories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ricardo, I, I, I was say she went for a, a weekend in Mayara at a beach house. Mm-hmm. And she see the skin outside the window. You know? She said she went by the grocery the next morning and buy two big bags of salt. 
<laughs> and put on every window sill in the house. You know. She says she's sorry for the cleaners when they came back to clean up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. It our our culture is so rich that I think we I admittedly say it all the time that we take it for granted. But our culture is so rich that the the same horror movies that we like to watch from outside we could as you rightfully said we had him here you know mm. i distinctly yeah. remember there was a night which one it is that if you're passing the you're, you're driving past it and you look in the mirror you wouldn't see it if you look in the mirror and you wouldn't see it yeah you gotta give me more context no like i, I was driving on the road that day right mm. it was about two o'clock in the morning oh the woman in the back seat what the woman in the back seat no 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 and i drove past somebody on the side of the room mm-hmm. but you know at that time of the morning if you drive past somebody you would look in the rear view mirror or your wing mirror to see oh, the the, the rumor is that um, vampires do have reflections uh-huh yeah uh-huh just turn it out there well then <laughs> all right no yeah uh-huh. okay, yeah I mean, yeah. all that aside, if I was to tell you some of my personal experiences with um the supernatural, well, then again, too, I had baptism in my family, and we we, we just have a gift now, something called second sight, but we can stay out of that and off to people here, which so now. Yeah, that's yeah, the I've seen some things and I've some experienced some things, and I know I don't deal up with um the Halloween business. Like I know why I don't deal up with it. Right. right. For the people who are frivolously doing the thing, I'm not in a position to tell. You. I know why I'm not dealing up with them thing. Mm-hmm, right. mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is, we have everybody. In, everybody has a story about um some beach house that went, or some country family that went by any country, or some night current gone, or some night that was coming home tight after a lime, or you know they get up early for no reason and they can't go back to sleep. But I'm saying, does it have it had thing? Yeah, it have, have there's a lot. Oh, no. my, da- my, my dad um this was this had to be over 20 years ago. He was telling us um about an idea coming from theater. Now, this was back in the days down in Separia when there was still light and street light with um to, yeah right and mm. so this he was telling us the story 20 years ago but this happened when he was much younger so we could safely say this story happened about 60 years ago mm. and right, to carry the one yeah, yeah about 60 years ago so I'm cutting through the fields and them fellas see a giant chicken about six feet tall right and um in on a corner and who pull out the matches and who because back then yeah you know set, set a light and torch light and them kind of thing mm-hmm. a couple of them see it a couple of them didn't see it who pick off and run and who leave who and but the thing is he didn't know that maybe like a year or two prior i had a dream where i saw like this massive six foot tall chicken walking up the street right so when i hear my father talking about something that i had only dream about and then to hear that he saw it in his youth as a as a zombie I found it was hilarious and also strangely coincidental, right? They ask, everybody has stories. Everybody have the, well, you know, night um, night terrors that us call them now, sleep paralysis and them kind of thing. We used to say, John, be holy down, right? When you're, you know, I, you're, you're awake, but you're not awake and you're, you can't you get feel, up. And, you feel like you have a weight over you know, kind of Yeah, the incubus and the succubus and them thing that us call um, the, or the seductress and the lagahoos and the, the sukuyas and the, that all kind of thing. All kind of jumping thing out here. What I'm saying is, if all you biting the people on them festival, we have horror stories. I know. I see that. Me like tell you, and if I had to dress up for Halloween again, I was gonna dress up as a politician, right? I just saying, because that's one of the scariest things that have out here this last rounds. These people will smile in your face, Aaron. And I have no problems with all politicians, you know. I have problems with the politicians who not do no work. I just seen anyway. I had to tie it, I had to tie it back here on to my frustration with what it is I'm seeing in the papers. Because we live in people live in horror stories right now. You want to hear horror stories? Go and listen to a patient in the hospital. What do you want to hear a horror story? Go and listen to a doctor in the hospital. I come in next week to tell my horror story. I had to go license in office tomorrow. Hmm. Yeah, way boy. Oh, you know what? They ain't gonna record, so just put your phone just just leave your phone in your pocket. And record the, the audio. But what I just said, it's a real jumpy thing out here. Right? But 
let me not be so worried about the supernatural that we fail into study the natural now where the order gone by where the order gone you know what's scary to me corrupt police you know what's scary to me teachers who not teaching because they understand people had to learn but because that's where they was getting a walk that, those things scary to me that's scary because that is not um they're not to frighten you for one night that, that is that's horror stories you just wake up into get together but on a brighter note on friday i had the opportunity to speak at a career day in marbella north secondary school i want to send my congratulations to the staff and the students i want to extend my thanks to the minds of trinidad and tobago initiative for giving me the opportunity to uh, assist i want to say that i saw some I saw some things that reminded me how important it is for us to not just talk the talk here in the living room, but to actually go out there and walk the walk too. You know, there, there are a lot of youths who are hungry for somebody to pay attention to them. There are a lot of youths who are hungry for the opportunities for somebody to pour into them and to get them a word of encouragement or to, you know, to do something different enough that they remember it and it hopefully impact the decisions. Um, so I just want to say thanks for the you know? reminder. You know, you're saying that, Ricardo, and I think there's something that I think we we have been doing, but I think personally, I want to take it a step up. Next year for the carnival season, um, I would like to put it out there that any young person who wants to experience some of our cultural events for the season right i could only pick one i I, i'm not a millionaire (laughs) right even though i would love to be Hmm. you sure Um, yeah i'm not a i'm not a millionaire but for any young person between the ages of 18 and 25 who would like to work with me for the carnival season and when i say work with me i'll be taking you to the cultural shows for you to see what goes on behind the scenes i could only do one person right we'll be taking you to work here we we'll be seeing how this goes for you to understand and get a greater appreciation for our culture because just like how you say ricardo the youths are, are anxious and they are awaiting somebody older to listen to them and guide them we also have to understand that we need to do succession planning mm-hmm. and Just like how you say, the greatest horror story in Trinidad and Tobago is politics. The second greatest horror story is our lack of succession planning. Because we have our um, Dr. Rowley turned, what, 74 last week? Hmm. Oh yeah, by the way, happy belated birthday. Yeah, I wasn't even going to say that. Yeah, yeah, but, well, be the office, man. Let's, let's, yeah, let's respect the office. Let's, yes, correct. Because when, when, right? when you are when you are prime minister, um, people vex with you. I still want them to tell you happy birthday, Ira. I I don't want to be prime minister of this country. Yeah, I want to be permanent secretary of our ministry. But that way you're saying, eh? but remember, OPR coming into play. So anyway, but really, but really if OPR ladder, if you know? OPR coming into play, how come we waste our million dollars on ladders? I mean. We can waste a million dollars on ladders. We could use the ladders? No, we can't. Not for that. Anyhow, so... So, there are no farmers and things we give them ladders too? Anyway, whatever. Yeah, but, um, guys, yeah, but, um, guys yeah, just saying, ultimately, we need to continue to pass our culture, and not just the culture, the opportunities to grow our culture from generation to generation. And as we are getting perilously close to the hour of 7 p.m., mm. as much as we we get Kenny real flack, I have to continuously thank Kenny for presenting me with the opportunities. Yeah. Because when we go to all these different cultural shows and all these different things, most of the times I'm the youngest presenter. And I am well into my 30s. Yeah, that might have been cute 10 years ago. You know, to be the, the youngest presenter when you're 
early in mid twenties. Yeah, but I in my mid to late thirties, y'all, yeah. and I am the youngest presenter there. So we need to ensure that somebody in the twenties or late teens is coming up now to say, I am interested in hosting or working on work and wanting to go and do these shows. I am interested to go and get myself involved in NCC or Tuco to want to make sure that the young people come out of Calypso Festa and Fiesta and Carnival events. We can't talk about Pantry and Bago because Pantry and Bago are real young people there mm-hmm. yeah, that yeah. making sure Pan continuing. Yeah. Big up your, hey, your small boss. I got to go I start to call him small boss and I got to call Kenny hey. big boss. Who's that? Your, um, your, 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 your gigs boss now. Your, your Pan partner. Oh, he. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. actually, actually, I have some work to do it for, for it tomorrow. Right? But there are young persons that are anxious and are waiting opportunities. And we should not be the gatekeepers, not just of the culture, but of leadership to keep them out of the gates. Because these young people, when we decide to hang up our boots or to go and get married and say, I don't want to do this no more. Mm-hmm. Or when we have children to say, we do that already. Right. Somebody else can handle it. Or when we decide to retire at the age of 75, because apparently they keep pushing back the retirement age every budget. Who is going to pick up the mantle if we keep in the gate closed and not allowing the young people in? Hmm. With that being said, this is your Shirley DJ era 868. I remind you each and every time that culture is my code. And I also tell you that love is the currency. So spend some today. Let somebody know you love them, guys. And I also empathize with those who have lost a loved one over the past year and more who will be now going to honor their memory by lighting a grave or saying a silent prayer in their memory tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. And it's a tough journey to walk because grief, it could, you could get over grief in a day, you could get over it in a year, or you could never get over it. Remember those persons who would have lost someone and reach out to them tomorrow and just reassure them that you are there for them and there with them. Ricardo? Yeah, this is Ricardo Mitchell, the social stage on the global stage. Thank you for joining us. Remember, guys, the hourglass is opaque. You don't know how much time remains, so whatever you're doing, be good and stay safe. I want to do a shout out, a roll call. Um, happy belated birthday, Tarek. Good meeting, you, brethren. Tarek, um, oh. you don't know a guy I met through some work with the GSCT and that type of thing too. Uh, oh, okay, cool. cool, cool. Um, happy birthday, Twine, bestie. Rondé, um, fresh fade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You when you reach back, we could do a thing. Um, but the three young men that I met in oh, listen, Barbara, before I move on to that, um, happy belated birthday, Tyrell, as my brother, yeah. and happy birthday to my road manager, as I call him, because any job I have and I need somebody to roll with me, he always there to Blackie. Well, hey. I watch. Marcus, sorry, Marcus. <laughs> Mar- Marcus. blessings on the birthday, Marcus. Right, we celebrating tomorrow. Nice one. And uh, most importantly, uh, three young men I met at the Marabella North Secondary School on Friday morning. Alim, Mohammed, uh, to Jalen, Coffee, and Deshaun. Let me make sure I get your last name right, Deshaun. I want to call all your names so that when we when get big in the dance, yeah, Desha- Deshaun Batiste. I call in all your names for a reason. Right? I, I, I saw something very, very uh, special in you young men. And I hope that you'll continue looking for ways to express the thing in you. Because the country needs the youth to get it together. But it means it, 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 the country needs us to help them get there. Alright. Uh, God bless all you. Uh, to the listeners who stayed on, who locked on, who came in, who played the, who will replay the video later. Or who listen on the airwaves and we have no clue that you're listening to us. We want to thank you for your support and your encouragement uh it is it is challenging to continue speaking when you're not sure if anybody listening but i could guarantee you i could guarantee you that whack listeners listen 
Correct and, is and, right. And I take it, I take in that. All, all you know, all your heart is, and all your heart is for the for the country and for the people. And I respect that and I admire that. And all the trouble we just give, I really hope that we do in all the justice by having these conversations and taking the spirit of work outside and into other communities and other age groups. So all your God bless, stay safe. And yeah, Mr. Desmond up next to the big band. Yeah. Yeah. But before that, let me see if we can get a song in or two now. Yeah, boy. Um, Kenny, after you call man, beg me to play a tune. <laughs> nah, he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't. He did. Take it away, Kenny. Hello, Mr. Philippe. Continue to produce. Leave singing for sweet voice people now. Ayo. Yes, as a musician, I took a challenge, made a decision. Against all odds, I should be the ring. Man, give me a song and say, boy. On the radio, to my surprise, mother can still call to criticize. Arranging music in your song. Forget about singing and stick to your rules. You make the wrong choice. That's for singers with them golden voice. It's plain to see you take the wrong road. Leave singing alone, you broke like a toad. Your gravel voice debut tant. Let me tell you what people want. Only sick voices, only sick voices. That could soon and relieve like gypsy, nappy, voicey, even naughty. But crime exploding through all this country. Things so scary, so you have to listen to Since your peace has been brought, your feel is a big man. A gold chain on your neck and a gun in your right hand. But you used to beat drum and your rail could have played pants. Now you is a shutter only killing an African. Baron Kenny J, voice is so sweet. But even them can't walk the streets. All them sweet voice I get black voice sense. Killing your race with no consequence. Voice like honey with real sugar coat. And stop a bad boy busting your throat. My voice is not the sweetest in good. But them rude boy listening every word. Your voice is a mess. Like cacophony, you're causing distress. It's plain to see that you've missed the map. Your tone of voice sounding like a bar. Look, you have no sweet voice to flaunt. So let me tell you what people want. Only sweet voices, only sweet voices. That could soon and relieve like you. Nyla Blackman, Valentino, even Baron Still your friend bullets wrong like some moron You think so wrong, so you better listen to If you see the crime, you better make the report fast Instead of beating your child, it's the teacher your planner You know in your heart, the boy was a real best But you on the TV, was a good boy, was the best Show is not me alone. Have something to say with no singing tone. To reach the heart of them is led you. Cut through the chaos, I'll be gonna true. Sweet melodies does caress the air. But sometimes it's gravel they need to hear. My voice reflects the struggles we face. Cut them so deep it does leave a trace. Your sound is refined. You need vocal training, get more defined. She says sweet voice is the golden rule. You can't be serious, you're playing the fool. You know I'm your confidant. But let me tell you what people want. Only sweet voices, only sweet voices. That could soon and relieve like Dexter. Drew Patsy, explainer, even Rosie. Every fatty blood just flowing in this country. Just watch me, cause now you're listening to I watching you good on your bad boy for what trip? You just take a boy life just to get some fit. Boy to leave you alive, you really can't afford. With no fear of dying and you have no fear of God.
Walk it, 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 walk it